Good morning from somewhere in the Georgia backcountry. We're on our way to try and find a primitive campsite in the woods, which is basically a free camp. This is the current road situation. It's solid. It's not like it's just a bit soft on the top. Okay. Yeah, should we give it a go? That's quite a big, a big hole though. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna go out and around that way. Now you see, like people have gone through. Okay. Yeah. The road's not too bad. It's pretty much just compacted sand. Um, there's just a few little wet spots from where it's rained and it's quite marshy around here so I'm guessing the drainage isn't amazing but um, it's not too bad, just a lot of potholes. Where the hell are we going? Satnam said we were here like five minutes ago but it did say like the road ended here and then the pin was over there. Right. So, wow, look how dense this is. I know. It says camping area this way. But there is a whole lot of deep sand up to my ankle. It looks like there might be a road in here. I don't think we have any phone signal here, so we're trying to find somewhere that's nice and open so we can hopefully get the starling cow and hopefully it works. So there is some tree cover here but it is quite open above us, so fingers crossed. The Starlink should be okay. Thank you. Because the trees aren't like hanging over us, I'm hoping we'll be able to get a good signal. Think we're in okay well that is as officially set up if you don't know we are driving this camper van from the uk all the way down to argentina we're currently driving down through the states and we've escaped into the back country of georgia just to find a little bit of peace and quiet and also just to kind of see what the landscape of this area is like the forest here is incredibly dense and thick and jess is carrying her defense against the dark art stick my defense stick for somebody said that the wild boars in this region can be quite aggressive and it's always good to hike with a stick. So, that's exactly what I'm doing. I don't think there's gonna be many alligators here because there's not much water. No. Um, but I... po po possibly wild boar and also snakes, need to be careful of snakes. It's really humid, but apparently not as humid as it can get. Somebody commented last week saying this park can get like 90, 90 and 90 days. 90, where it's 90. 90 degrees Fahrenheit and then 90% humidity which sounds brutal. God. We got here a little bit later on in the afternoon and it's amazing how quickly it's got dark in these woods. There is one other truck camper on the other end of this little clearing from us. But apart from that, we're on our own. We heard a weird noise in the trees about 10 minutes ago. It sounded like something going, oh, not like a dog, but just like unlike anything I've heard before. Literally have no idea what it was and it hasn't done it again. These woods are... Can you hear that? That sounds like monkeys. Gonna be some weird noises tonight. We just had a look online to see what animals sound like monkeys and apparently barred owls sound just like monkeys and we googled it and yeah, that's exactly what we heard earlier. Are there monkeys in Florida? Probably in people's homes. Yeah, have a look and see because it's tropical, isn't it? You're laughing at me now. I'm, I don't know if I've read that there might be monkeys in Florida. That's like saying like, oh, there's alligators in the New York sewers, you know, it's an urban myth. Okay, well have a look before, he, he, never, he never ever believes me. Okay. And? The core population of monkeys. Uh, of what, macaques. sorry? 
in the central sorry? Florida. The what? Sorry. Around the Silver Ridge, Ridge River. But there Asia. are wild monkeys in Florida. Was I right again? In Florida. But why am I having this problem saying that? Thank you. Silver Spring State Park. Seven years. One day he'll start believing me. This forested area is called Buffalo Swamp. We later spoke to a hunter who told us that a young boy tragically died in these woods about 10 years ago. Unlike the pretty temperate forests of Europe that beckon you to explore, these woods are thick and dark and ominous. Cloying mud, black knee-high water and an impenetrable layer of moss and spiky bushes. Walking through here is like entering the pages of a southern gothic novel. We were both in a landscape that we'd never experienced before. Ben's just packing the Starlink away. These guys are chilling out in here. It's a warm one, isn't it, guys? Very, it's so humid today. We'll get the air yeah. when we're in the, on the road. Time to say goodbye to this little camp spot. Well, that was a really lovely little camp spot just tucked away in the countryside in Georgia and has a really fun little road to come in onto. The other day, Sophia hit 100,000 miles. We also missed it because we were keeping an eye out for obviously when it would tick over to 100,000 and Ben noticed at 101. How annoying is that? But at 100,000 miles, she's in need of some TLC and she needs an oil change. Now what's really cool here is the Walmarts and some other businesses do like drive through oil changes where you can pull in, ask for an oil change and they do it there and then for you. We have nothing like that back in the UK um, and Walmart do it so we're going to pop into a Walmart and see if they can fit us in. Not all Walmarts have space for our tour van so we're going to have to try and find one where we fit. So we picked up an oil filter from a local Mercedes garage um, so yeah, drop that off, drop the filter off with them and we'll just wait and see. Ben is just checking now. Wait. So we can still get under the roof. The handbrake was on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's too tall. Oh my god. No, the paddleboard's gonna get. Oh my god. That <laughs> he said it's gonna take an hour. That's only because there were two other people in front of us. They've actually been relatively quick. We're just tucked away in this little corner, right next to this delightful water. Mm. There she is. Your chariot awaits. All good? That was all good. Yeah, I'll tell you, have you getting, do you want me to tell you about it? Yeah. Well, that was a bit more hassle than it was worth, wasn't it? I think we were there for what, an hour and a half, nearly two hours. Yep. And we were, it, they took about an hour to do ours. Yeah. Um, because I supplied the filter, there was no way for them on the system to say that filter supplied because they've changed the system. So they had to like charge you the filter, then take it off. But then they couldn't work. You know, it was all just a bit of a, a bit of a faff. So yeah, done. I'm just going to give it a quick check. Uh, but next time, I'll see how much it is to put it into. Um, Mercedes. So the filter was $30 and everything for this was, I think it was $84. So it's $54.80 for the oil and then $27 for um, the mechanics time and everything. So yeah, $81.92. All our tires are good. They check the pressure. They're all good. Uh, all, all the flips, done a full check of everything, lights and everything as well, which is really good. Um, Everything came back fine, all good. What's that? What's that blue paint from? Oh, that's the one. Oh, I know what that is. That's mechanics gloves, isn't it? It's melted because it was hot. Oh, is that what it, you thought was blue paint? Yeah, I thought it was blue paint. So the yeah, it'd be really easy for me to do it, but the problem is I just can't get rid of engine oil, so it kind of works out. If, Back home, like labour is about what sixty pound an hour or something, mm -hmm. easily. So it makes sense for me to do it. But here, like thirty dollars, what's that? Twenty five quid for, and they were there for an hour and a half. 
Okay, we're good to go. Let's rock and roll. Does anyone else's clutch squeak? It's so annoying. It's just a, it's the pedal bit. It just needs a little bit of lube on it. We are heading south now towards the Florida border. Can you believe we are almost in Florida? We have one more night in Georgia. Apparently van life in Florida is a bit on the tricky side and we found it a bit tricky in the US anyway. And Florida is meant to be even worse. So we've got one more night in Georgia. We found somewhere just on the border and the day is getting away from us. It's starting to get dark, so. Park fee required. Oh, In a quarter wow. mile, quarter. continue straight. No parking fee. Oh, parking fee. So before it gets too dark, we have come into Crooked River State Park to give the dogs a little stretch and just have a little walk. It looks absolutely beautiful. And I just love like the American way of naming things. You've got like, I don't know, Moosehead Ridge or Oak Creek, Crooked River. It's like, so American, I love it. So, got to pay five pounds and deposit it in this envelope. So, I think I'll put the five dollars in there. Yep. And put that in there. You punch out the day of the week, so what day is it today? Tuesday. Oof, get out. And then Ooh. put that inside. I've never uh, okay. seen a parking ticket like this before. Is there room in the wee bottle? Yeah, I don't think you'll get in it then. <laughs> Rare and usually result from provoking the snake. Oh, okay. I've still got the stick. Look at the size of that pine cone. How beautiful is this? Look at all the pine trees and palmettos. I've never seen so many in my life. Just one palmetto. Oh my god. So the trail has just come out. I think that's an osprey, babe. There's an osprey. There's an osprey. Literally an osprey right behind me. Wow, we've just come out onto the river. The sun is setting and it is absolutely beautiful. It's official. We are in alligator country. Even though we are in alligator country, alligators are naturally scared of humans and they're probably more likely to like run away from you. Um, they're only a, really a problem like if you were in the water. So I think like us walking along and stuff, we're very unlikely to have any problems with them. I still don't want to see one too close, which is why I've got my stick with me. Not that it's going to do much, but it makes me feel safe. This is a nice little boat ramp. Yeah. This is the nicer one we've been to, that's for sure. What a beautiful spot this is, right on the river that we were walking along earlier. So yeah, trailheads and boat landings are always good shouts if you're struggling to find somewhere to park. So not only are there alligators, but there's manatees here. It's nice here, isn't it? So far, Georgia has treated us to some amazing park-ups. Good morning. What a beautiful. No, school wear. What a beautiful day today in Georgia. We are officially heading in to Florida today. I'm so excited because after Florida, we start turning west. Right. Okay. Back. Back. Had a really peaceful night's sleep here last night. Wasn't disturbed once in the night. It's starting to get a little bit busy this morning though with fishermen, so we're gonna head out before we cause too much of a nuisance. It's quite a big car park though, isn't it? It's I reckon big, it's a, it's a... probably okay. Uh, we're in Florida! Woo -hoo. We're in Florida guys! Scout celebrating by licking my thigh. No, my shin. <laughs> That's it, we are in the Sunshine State and it is living up to its name. What a beautiful day. You just don't get that back home. That's why I like, I love seeing stuff you don't get back home. It is still going. I can't even see the end of it. All the way down there, I wow. still can't see no, the end still, of it. It's still 
We are arriving now in St. Augustine, right on the Florida coast. It is meant to be a really beautiful American city. The oldest continually inhabited city in the States with some beautiful old like historic centers and stuff. They actually have free RV parking there, which is great, but it's very, very busy getting in. So just keep our fingers crossed that there is space. Your destination will be no on the left. No parking grass. Oh, there's loads that's of loads. space. This oh, is your awesome. destination is on the left. Famous for pirates and its colonial Spanish architecture, St. Augustine is nicknamed the ancient city and came highly recommended to us. Cobblestone streets, palm trees, and that Florida sunshine. We couldn't miss a quick explore as we passed by on our route south. St. Augustine is a very pretty, very walkable town. Beautiful like pedestrian streets, palm trees everywhere, beautiful Spanish buildings. Every other shop is like a souvenir shop, a restaurant, a cafe, or a hotel. And speaking of restaurants, we're starving. We're very hungry. We might try and find pizza and then find somewhere nice and shaded to come and sit with these guys and eat it. How does that sound? Oh, pizza, pizza. We We've not had pizza, pizza, pizza in months. I'm gonna order pizza, not you guys. Let's go, Dan. They look amazing. These are garlic knots. How amazing do they look? Oh, yeah. Doughy, garlic, bathroom. Good, goodness. Oh my god. That is so good. There you go. Go on the river. There you go. Go and take it <laughs> into your respective corners. That was a lovely little pit stop in St. Augustine. Is it a little bit commercialised there? Yes but it is very, very pretty. It's such a beautiful little place, even if you just drop by for a bite to eat. And if you want to spend the whole day there, there are loads of things to do. So definitely worth a little side trip. Parking in Florida along the beaches, however, is pretty much impossible. But I may have found somewhere that we might be able to do it for a couple of nights. So we're gonna head there now. It's another hour and a half down the coast. So we're gonna make our way south and fingers crossed this little spot works out. Are you glad you discovered a cruise control earlier this year? I am, yeah. The roads are so long and straight and boring, I don't have to do anything apart from just look out the window. We're just crossing a bridge onto Merritt Island, which is home to the Kennedy Space Center, aka NASA. We're meant to be parking on here, oh, but here there's just is. been two tractors that have blocked it off. Look, it looks yeah. like. Destination yeah, is on the left. Yep, those two are it is all along here, it's all closed. Oh my gosh. Beach closed. Well, that wasn't the end to our little Florida road trip that we thought, is it? No. I knew it was gonna be too good to be true. It did look too good to be true. It was basically just a strip of beach just as you get onto Merritt Island, which was free to park on. In fact, the police have moved people from elsewhere to that spot, so that's how people know that that spot is fine to sleep on. You look right out onto the water and it's just this long, long, long strip of beach, but it's completely closed off. It looks like they're doing some work on it, maybe like on the seawall there. But yeah, that is a shame. We might be having our very first Cracker Barrel sleepover since we've been in the States. So Cracker Barrel is similar to Walmart in that they generally allow overnight parking all over the States in their car parks. Um, the best way I can describe the Walmart and Cracker Barrel situation is almost like the free airs that you might get in France and Germany. Or like, not necessarily scenic, but just parking areas that it's safe for you to go and park there overnight. Now, not all, not all Walmarts allow overnight parking, um, but there is a Cracker Barrel down the road here that does allow overnight parking, and there is nothing for miles and miles around now, and it is starting to get dark. So I think we're gonna have to abandon the wild camp spot plans. We did try, and we're gonna go, and we haven't stayed at a Cracker Barrel yet. So no, it's gonna be our true. first Cracker Barrel experience. It's so great that places do this because right now it's getting dark. You're in a place you don't know. There's no wild camping spots that you can see, a lot of private land and stuff. And we can just tuck ourselves into this corner if you want. Yeah. After a successful and very uneventful night in Cracker Barrel, we left in search of somewhere to settle down for a few days while we caught up on some work. We thought we'd try Fishing Lake we found, about an hour inland. We weren't to know we had just hit a jackpot. Wow. 
We were going to leave the video yesterday at Cracker Barrel, but last night we had another quick look on our eye overlander and found this fishing lake about an hour's drive away that allows campers to park over $20 a night, which is dirt cheap for Florida. Like the cheapest campsites we've been finding are like $40 like minimum. And that's like cheap, fully booked ones. So found this place, pulled up, there is no one else here. And I feel like we've walked into a David Attenborough documentary. There are monarch butterflies flying everywhere. As we drove in, there were two raccoons on the trash bins outside, two vultures on the trash bins outside. There's vultures circling overhead. There's bald eagles circling overhead. We're right next to these amazing wetland, swamp, mangrove areas. There's also ospreys nesting here. We've probably seen about five already swooping down. One tried to attack a blue heron, <laughs> literally just next to us as we pulled up. It's incredible. There's definitely alligators in these swamps. We haven't seen them yet, but we're gonna go on the hunt for them. This is Blue Cypress Lake and it is absolutely beautiful. It is just a haven of tranquility. Worth every, every penny. <laughs> Guys, I think our run of bad wildlife luck might be ending. Meet one of the residents, a beautiful alligator who lives opposite the van. Blue herons and wading birds are too many to count and the nesting ospreys fill the skies at night. Subscribe to follow our journey as we travel on the road to Argentina and make sure to tune in next week. Florida was welcoming us with open arms and it wasn't finished just yet. Oh my god. Do you know what, if we hadn't seen it, we probably would have missed it. Yeah. Oh look, 